This video will cover some incising basics. I will go over a little more information on some of the tools I covered in the incising tools video. I will also go over stages of clay and the stage of clay that tends to be the most user friendly for incising and also testing the clay to see if it's ready for incising and other points of consideration to assist in having successful results in incising the surface of your clay. In the incising tools video, I went over generally tools that compress the clay, tools that extract the clay, tools that are made at home to expensive tools. In this video, I will be going over a little more detail. One tool that I did not mention in the incising tools video is the needle tool, and that was omitted with intention. I see a lot of people using the needle tool. It would not be my go-to incising tool. However, if you do want to use this tool, there are some steps you can take to ensure successful results. So if you use the needle tool and just scrape along the surface like this, several things happen. There are little clay crumbs that you might see, or the line is so small and so narrow that when you go to glaze, all the glaze will not flow in and out of this line, so you may end up with some pinholing in the glaze. My recommendation is not to use the needle tool, but if you are, then I would recommend laying a piece of clear plastic over your clay and then not holding your tool straight, but at an angle, and then gliding it across the surface of your clay. And then I can just lift the plastic. And what that does is give me a smooth line so that the glaze will be able to flow in and out of this line. If you were to use the needle tool, and say, oops, I forgot, I used the needle tool, you can always go back and fix that by laying a piece of plastic over the line that you created and just going over it. And then lifting the plastic and you have smoothed that line. Once again, a ball stylus which compresses or displaces the clay, however you want to refer to that, will give you a nice line and allow for the glaze to flow in and out of the line. A loop tool which extracts the clay will also give you a line that allows for the glaze to flow in and out of the line. Another thing to consider when incising is to find which way of gliding across the clay feels more comfortable. Do you feel more comfortable going left to right in a horizontal direction or do you feel more comfortable pulling in a vertical direction? If this is the case, then you would just move your piece in a different direction as you're working. I do see some people that will move in opposite directions where the line will be very straight and then in areas where it's moving in a direction that doesn't feel as comfortable and it's a little awkward, the lines tend to be not as straight. So just take a tool and practice pulling or practice dragging across and see how that works for you. And it may be different that with the ball stylus tool, you feel working in one direction works for you, but with a loop tool, you might find that either working vertically or horizontally may be different than working with the ball stylus tool. So try that because you may find that suddenly everything works, the lines are working great, and it was just a matter of turning your piece and finding out which direction works for you, horizontal and vertical. And again, try it with the two different types of tools, the tool that compresses and the tool that extracts. Next, we have our stages of clay. Wet clay, leather hard, stiff leather hard, and bone dry. 
I recommend leather hard clay for incising. So how do we know if our clay is leather hard? Let's review. Wet clay would be clay straight out of the bag or just out of the mold if we're casting. Another way to tell if clay is wet is it still has kind of a shiny or reflective quality to it. And if I take my finger and drag it over the surface, I pick up clay on my hand and it has a tacky feel to it. With leather hard clay, I can bend it, manipulate it, no problem. Also, if I drag my finger along the surface of the clay, I shouldn't pick up any clay. Here, I still have a little bit of clay on my finger, so that lets me know I want to wait a few more minutes. It's been a few minutes. I'll now drag my finger along the surface of the clay, and I'm no longer picking up any clay on my finger, so I'm good to go. Next, we have stiff leather hard, and there is visible moisture, but if I try to manipulate it, it cracks. So I just gave it a slight little bend and it cracked. So that I would consider stiff leather hard. And the final stage of clay we have is bone dry where there is no visible moisture and clay is at its most fragile state. I don't recommend doing any incising on bone dry clay for a lot of different reasons, mostly health and safety reasons. We don't want to be breathing in clay dust and dust particles. So really all incising can be accomplished at the leather hard stage. So here I have a little tile of clay and I'm going to go ahead and run my finger across and make sure it's at the right stage. I'm not picking up any clay, so I'm good to go. Leather hard stage is what I want to work with, and that's exactly what I have. I also recommend either taking a metal rib or a rubber rib and going across the surface of your clay. I have a variety of tools with various flexibility, but to keep it simple, your Metal rib that you get in your basic toolkit will work, or sometimes I like to use the plastic cards, an expired card, or the cards that come in the mail. And when I'm done with the rib, whether I've used the flexible rib or the metal rib, I'll still go over it with my finger. And what it's doing is creating a nice smooth surface and I find that really helps. So another thing I wanna mention, we talked about the tools that compress or displace the clay and extract the clay. In addition to having the ball stylus tools and some of the other tools that I mentioned in the other vid, you could also use a tool to compress the clay, a comb style tool or actually a little piece of comb and that would work similar to the idea of compressing the clay as we're moving along. So I'm going to incise on this piece of clay with a variety of tools just to kind of illustrate some of the different options that are available when incising. I'm going to start by using the ball stylus tool. And one thing you want to know is that usually there are two ends. You have the little ball on this side and a smaller one on the other side. A lot of times people are tempted to use the smaller ball thinking that this larger side might be too wide, but you're really only using the tip of the tool or the high point. So one thing I recommend is to have a little slab of clay on the side, the same stage of dryness as the piece you're actually working on. So this way you can kind of use this to sketch and test maybe the line quality that you want before you actually jump onto your piece. If you're pretty confident in what you're doing, this might be a step that you don't need, but when people are first learning to incise, I find that it can be helpful. Now I could take just one tool and incise the entire piece 
with that same tool, but I find that using a variety of tools, or even if you're sticking with one particular type, the type of tool that compresses or the type of tool that extracts, if you have variation in line quality, it makes the piece a little more visually interesting. I'll go ahead and demonstrate different ways that can be accomplished. So another thing to mention before we begin is throughout the process, you wanna make sure that your tools are clean. If you have something on your tool and you go to incise into the surface of your piece and there's a little fragment in there, that might affect the line quality. So make sure you have a little damp sponge on the side handy to clean your tools. And I would recommend having it damp and not wet. So now I'm going to incise using a variety of tools. I won't cover all the tools, but some of the most common tools used and some of the possibilities and consideration. So I'm going to create a little border around this little tile of clay, and I'm going to use the tool that extracts the clay. If I want an even border, I'm going to place my finger here and I'm going to pull down. Uh, so I'm going to put some dots, I'm just gonna start right here to just kind of gauge where the line will end on each one and I'm not really concerned with having them be exact just close and then now I'm going to put my finger on the side as I glide across and that's going to help me have my straight line and notice that I'm extracting the clay Now, my clay was at the right stage, and one of the indicators is when I'm extracting these lines, if my little pieces of clay kind of look like ribbons, that's a good sign. If they're little chunks of wet clay, then I might want to let it set up a little more, but I tested it pretty well before I began. If it's really dry, then they're going to be hard little chunks and it's not going to be consistent lines. So uh, this is a good sign that my clay was at the right stage. We see though that I have some little balls of clay. What do I do when this happens? It's a real easy fix. I'm just going to use a soft bristle brush and just kind of dust those off. Because my clay is leather hard, it's like perfect stage to do this and not worry about making any additional marks or distorting anything. And this is just a little brush. This is actually one of my do-it-yourself incising tools. And this one has a little brush on the end of it. But you could use any brush that you have. Just make sure the bristles are soft so that you're not scratching the surface of your clay. So next, I'm going to make second line in here using my bobby pin tool and I'm not going to use this as a test tile. I will take my other tile that I have and just kind of drag through and see what that might look like. It's almost the same, a little different. So once again, I'm going to put some dots on there and I want it kind of close actually. So I'm gonna go like that and I'll know where to end. This one actually, if you see, it's a little bit longer, so I can, where the bobby pin is, so I can kind of push it out and still stabilize my hand here. Where this one, I, I could still push it out, but I'm using the little more of the side of the tool. And I could also use the pencil as a tool. And all bobby pins are not the same, some of them come up to a point and some are rounded. So that's another thing. If you're making your own tool, that's why you always want to try it on a piece of clay first. And then if I'm dragging it along the side, how is that going to look? It gives me a little bit wider. So I'll go ahead and I will use this tool and I'm dragging down to this point. Now starting here. Okay. 
So next I'm thinking I might want to use this comb tool, but before I use it on my piece, I'll test it out and see if that's what I want to do. And again, I have these little crumbs that I would just go ahead and use this little brush to brush away. Maybe I'll just do, go from the center and push out. I'll start from the center here and push out. And here we see that there was a little skip in the line, so a real easy fix for that is that needle tool. But I'm going to go ahead and there's two things I can do. I can either lay the little plastic over, like I said, but I'm not really carving right now. I'm actually impressing. So I'm just using the side of the tool and dragging across and then just kind of impressing like this. So although I don't like the needle tool for actually impressing, sometimes it can come in handy to go ahead and clean up little areas. And this is fine brushing this off when it's leather hard. This is why I don't like working and don't recommend really working in bone dry clay. These particles are nice and damp and I can clean off the surface where I'm working and everything's okay. This clay is safe when it's in its damp form. If this was dry, then I'd be dealing with dust particles and I don't wanna be doing that. I wanna bring the ball stylus in. So we're looking at this one and I have a few. So I can use this little tile on the side to get a sense of what the different line quality is of each of them. And another thing to note is that if you have a larger tool, the tip of the tool is going to be narrower and then it becomes wider. So if I just use the top, it's going to be a little bit narrower than if I press in, almost getting half of that and then suddenly I have a wider line. So the amount of pressure on the ball stylus tool will, will also affect the line quality of the incising. This ball stylus, I think, I may go with one of the smaller lines, yes. So I have these two lines here. I'm going to go ahead and make a leaf and so I'm going to come in like this and then I kind of feel more comfortable dragging. So I turn my piece and I bring it back to this point and I've started to gather some clay on the ball stylus, which is fine. So this is what I wanted to go over, softening the lines. We don't want to have hard lines here, and although I have it at the ideal stage, sometimes you will get these little clay crumbs, which we already discussed. We can go ahead and soften them like this. Another thing you can do to soften lines if the brush isn't working is to use one of these makeup or foundation sponges. If you use this little foundation sponge, it cleans it up and it doesn't mar the surface. So two ways if you start seeing clay crumbs, ideally you wanna brush them off with a little soft brush, but if you still see a hard surface there, you can go over it with a foundation sponge. So now that I put that line in, I'm going to go in and I noticed that there's some little clay and I definitely want to keep my tool clean. Keep the vein of my leaf. Now, I could continue and have everything have the same line quality and then go back and make thicker or thin lines or as I'm working, I can make thicker and thin lines. What I do want to say is it is a little more visually interesting if the line quality is different. Let's just say I did this and I decided, you know what, I really want to make sure that there's a variation in line quality. I'm going to go ahead and use different size tools and I'm not going to wait until the end and go over. I'm going to start now. So again, I like to pull down, so I'm going to take this larger tool 
and come in here like this and go in like that. And then I will go ahead and take this um, smaller ball stylus tool starting here. And I'll just continue all the way down. And it is gathering little pieces of clay, which I said sometimes can happen, especially with this particular tool. Okay, and then now I will go ahead and brush that off. And I will go on the opposite. And I can either have them match or stagger, and I think I'm going to have them stagger. So this piece is actually a sampler, a way of showing the different tools, how they work, and ways of handling the incising as you're going through the process. And there's so many different ways. These are just ways that I've learned and I found them to be very helpful. Another thing I wanted to say is I freehand draw on the piece, but if you feel like you're a little hesitant to do that, you can always draw it in in pencil first. And that will also incise, but it's very gentle. And the one thing is that if you don't particularly care for the line you're, you've created, you're not committed to it, and you can just simply take your, your finger and press it in, and it erases it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back because I actually did like that. And then I will go back in and put the line similar to that. But for demonstration purposes, I'll go in and do that quickly. Okay, and I'll put a third and fourth leaf in here. But now let's try some different tools. As I said, this is really a sampler to show the different types of tools. You have this type of tool that kind of comes out of a triangle and that can also give you a line. The one thing with this is you want to be really careful and stabilize as you're carving because the deeper you go in, the wider and deeper the line is going to be. Um, I find that if I have my hand on the side and then I just hold that same amount of pressure as I go along, that will be very helpful. There is a smaller version of that tool. And let's see how this one works. That one works really nice. I'm gonna go back to this tool. So now I will go ahead and create another leaf here with the outside line being thicker. And this is extracting, so I'm having little pieces come out. And I will make, where here this line has been thinner, I'm going to make this line thicker. And if I wanted to go back and make this line um, thicker, I can, let's do that. And now I'll go ahead and I will use this smaller ball stylus and I like pulling down. And now for my fourth leaf, another tool, a little bit of a contrast. I'm just using a dull pencil. I'll make my leaf so that it comes down like this. And I'm kind of pulling towards me. And I'll go like that. So this was the pencil. that 
and I want to go ahead and pull this line over because this leaf is in the foreground and I'll clean that up. So this was just using the dull pencil. Now I'm going to use one of my more expensive tools and do the lines on the inside using a loop tool. This time I'm using the wooden loop tool and I'm going to drag towards the center. And now I will use my tool. And one thing I want to say about this tool, it's really nice. And you don't want any of those little clay crumbs remaining. So really make sure that you remove them and you want all the cleanup to be done again at leather hard. And if you can start to get into the stiff leather hard stage for this cleanup, you're okay. Put a little tiny something there with that. My needle tool, which I don't like to use for incising, but it's a great little cleanup tool. We'll just kind of poke that out and then I'll just brush and clean that up. Now, if during the course of incising, you've made little marks on your clay, remember, stay away from the yellow sponge. The little sponge on a stick is not as abrasive, but it still can leave some marks. My recommendation again, the foundation brush and any little lines that may have occurred or little marks that you don't like will just simply disappear and you can even soften up the lines gently going over the surface of your piece. So final thoughts on the clay that you're using. This was just done really quickly and roughly, but I'm still pretty happy with the results. It's really important to have the right stage of clay and leather hard is very user friendly. If it's not leather hard, it gets really gummy you'll really start picking up a lot of the clay on your tools and then you can end up dragging that across the rest of your design. So leather hard is your best bet, I believe. The next thing I wanted to mention about clay is that we want it at the leather hard stage. We want to prepare it. Smoothing over the surface helps a lot, forming that little skin and then you're just pressing into the skin or extracting from there and it just leaves it nice and smooth. The clay body. I want to mention something about the clay body. This was low fire clay and low fire clay is nice and smooth and will show up a lot of detail. If you're working in high fire clay, then I would recommend porcelain for incising. And if you're going to be working with the stoneware, then I would recommend working with a stoneware that doesn't have a lot of sand and grog in it or a real gritty kind of stoneware clay. Does that mean you can't incise on stoneware clay or clay that has sand and grog? You can most definitely do that and I do that myself. It's just if you have finer lines or you want a little more detail, then the smoother clays will give you more detail. So the idea for this piece came off of this piece, which is a little different. I didn't include the lizard. This particular incised piece, I believe I used two, maybe three different tools to get different line quality. And then I used a translucent glaze so that it would pull into the recessed areas, break at the high points, and then you have these flat areas. So you're almost having three different things happening there and it really shows the incised lines. So in conclusion, there are a lot of tools and techniques that can help make your incising project successful. And I hope that a few of these that have presented today will be helpful in achieving a successful incised piece. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And be sure to view the video on incising tools. Thank you.